I'm Patrick Bailey with iQlist.com. Today is April 15th, 2022. In this video, I'm going to show off a 3D printed dinosaur picture mat I created and show you how to tweak it. So just to show this off, this is just a picture mat. So I, I'm not a, much of a picture framing kind of guy. My mom is, my wife is a little bit more, uh, but she wants some different picture mats. So I decided to do some different things. So here's a dinosaur one I found. So I kind of got this all together and this actually is a um, Jurassic Park font I found. And so basically the idea is you can just kind of reuse this and then just put whatever kid's name you want in there and print it out. Now the idea is you just have a couple of layers on the bottom and then the top layer you switch out the color and then you get this black outline and you get, and you get whatever name you want in there. So I think, um, so there, there it is. And there's Gur. And I need to go make a Gur version now because he's actually not named Billy, he's named Gur. We'll call him Billy. We'll call <laughs> I don't think he'll respond. Uh, but anyway, so now let's go on and kind of show you how to use it and show you how to change the name Billy. Okay, let's go over some URLs real quickly. So I've already put the model out there on printables, and you can go there and download it, and I'll put a link in the show notes, but here it is right now. Uh, also, for those GitHub type of people, I put it out as a gist out on GitHub, and you can download the OpenSCAD code, even though the OpenSCAD code is on printables. Uh, but there's one thing to note on this, is I am using a custom font, uh, which I think I did include, because it is kind of, a, you know, available for free, for personal use. I did stick it out here, I believe. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Yep. No. I didn't. Dino, dino, dino. I guess I did not. Okay. Uh, well, I guess you need to get the font, otherwise it's not going to work very well. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll work, but you'll get a different thing. You might want different font. So I found, first of all, well, back up. Okay, here's the font. So I'll put a link in the show notes, Jurassic Park font at defreefront.co. You just go down here and the font looks pretty cool and you just download, boom, you got a font. Now, you can install it, but at least on Windows machine, if you try to install the font, OpenSCAD won't recognize it as, and it has an issue with it for some reason, I'm not sure why, even though it recognizes other fonts. But one fix I found over here in Reddit, they explain that the font needs to be another file. It needs to be in the username, the C users username.fonts folder, which I'll show here in a second. So you need to stick it there. And for those who are interested, I'm using uh, this bone. I'll put a link in here in the show in the show notes. There's a bone white PLA I'm using, which kind of comes pretty close, as close as I've found so far to uh, like fos fossilized fossilized bones. So anyway, with that, let's get going a little bit. So if you got a font, and I had to do this for a couple things, in your if you're on Windows, you go into your C, go into Users, go into your username. In my case, it's B I I B A I L E. Yours should be whatever your username is. And you may need to make a dot font folder with a dot in front of it. And then you just put the TTF files in there and then they should work. So hopefully that gets everyone past that issue. Now, with that, let's kind of go over. This is, this is one of those ones I'm going to show real quick how it works and how to adjust it. And I may do a video in detail how to create something like this. But this is kind of a cool one, picture frame mat. So, um, if you want to adjust this, and really there's only a couple of things you probably want to do. One, if you if you like the size for picture frame mat, and by the way, this is kind of the eh, pretty much the maximum size that you can pretty much put put on a Prusa, and it's working on one of the frames we have, which might be an excuse to get the new Prusa XL if you need a bigger frame mat. So, or some of these printers they have that have a continuous feed, maybe you could do some bigger mats. But this is about as big as you could do on a Prusa i3 Mark III. Uh, with that, let's go change it from Billy to something else. So we can see, uh, and this also might help. So here's that Jurassic Park. But if you want to change the font to something else, you know, I'll just copy this line because I want to keep it as is. I'll comment out the old one. You would go up here to help and go to font list. Click on the font list and search for whatever you had. Like there's the Jurassic Park one. But I can just, uh, let's start with the D. I don't know. How about Times? Times New Roman. I can click on bold, italic, and click on copy to clipboard, whatever you choose. Now I wish it'd be nice if they actually showed an example here of what it actually looks like, that'd be nice. Uh, if I really wanna see what something looks like, I just open up Word and I do it that way so I can see if I can look at the font. But here it'd be nice, a nice feature to add open SCAD people. But once I have that, I can come in here, delete that, paste, and now I have the information I need for this one. And if I run it, now I've got a different kind of Billy. Now I don't want that because it's Jurassic Park is way cooler, but maybe you want something different. Okay, so there we go, Billy. And of course you could 
change the size here. So if you wanted to change <clears throat> the width of something else, rather than 215, you want to say 255, it would change. And then you'd have to recenter and move everything around. Um, and if I wanted to change, if I move that, and that was a valid move, uh, I'd also have to go, I'd probably want to resize and rescale my dinosaur, boom, and kind of put him in a different location. So there's a lot you got to do with all that, but I'm not going to adjust it here because we'll kind of go with what we got. So undo, undo. But it's nice to know that you could, if you had a bigger or smaller mat, you could adjust it. You could change the size, move things around, and get the job done. But mostly what most we're going to probably do is I don't imagine everyone out there has his name Billy. So we probably want to go change that. So what I'm going to do is, and it's a little silly of me, I'm, I'm putting my little, my wife pointed out, I made a little nice picture with my dog Gur here. So I should make one that says Gur. So I'm com coming down here and I'll say Gur. So come down here, just replace that with Gur. And run it. And then we have Gur. And if I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, you know, 55, I could make it a little bigger, but I'm going to keep the original size. Or if I wanted to move it, you know, if I want to move it over to the other side, you could do it 150, just kind of however you want to do to tweak. Now, in my case, uh, I got a little issue because my dog's name Gur is not actually G-I-R, it's G period I period R period. And for anyone who's a fan of Invader Zim, it's Gur the dog. So, so he needs those periods in here, but there's an issue. So this font, if I put periods here, now most fonts are gonna work, but sometimes uh, with custom fonts, they don't cover all possibilities. So sometimes they may put a generic one in there. So whoever made this didn't bother making a period. So if I do this, they have this Jurassic Park font, which is kind of cool, but I, good job on them, but it's not a period, so it's not what I want. So I found my solution to my GUR problem was I separated with some, separated those. So there's, I separated them out, put a space in between, so they are separated a little bit. And then I, what I wanted to do, and I'll replicate, I have, another, I have some other code in my other window here. I'll replicate. So what I wanted to do is I have this linear extrude, which is gonna be, which is where my GUR lettering is. So I'll just come down here and I'll put a circle. I'll say circle and I'll make it two and boom. And where'd you go? We'll make it, we'll make it 20. Okay, why aren't you showing up? Oh, cause I can't spell circle. Okay. How about I spell circle correctly? Boom. There we go. Get it back to two. And from testing, two seem to be about the right size I need. But now I want to translate it. I need to get it in the right spot. And I'm gonna do, uh, two nested translates, because I want all those on the same line, and then I want each individual one pushed over. So when it comes to the uh, Y for the first one, I won't uh, adjust it, X and Y, but I'll, I'll adjust the Y. I'll say 45 in my case, and that, or sorry, 45, five, boom. And that gets me where I want to be, but then I'm gonna make another translate for this guy. Boom, boom. In this case, I'll say I want to do the X, but not the Y. Boom. There we go. And then I'll just copy and paste. I need two more. Boom, boom. And then 45, what do we say? 58.5, and I did 82. There we go, now I got my GUR, which actually I already made, is actually printed out behind me right now. Uh, so that's, you know, uh, or if you're a crazy person, I do know how to do this. I actually have some videos on another channel that I do uh, where I wanted to adjust a font. You can go open up a font and fix it, and so I could put that period back in or make one. That's a lot of work. Um, and here I fixed it in two seconds. But there are ways to make your own fonts, adjust fonts, tweak fonts, whole other subject, but it's possible. Uh, just like someone made this cool one. So there, I got my GUR, and then I could just render it, down the STL file, and uh, well, so 
there, there's how you can adjust it and tweak it to whatever name you want, right? In fact, we'll come in here and I'll just say, rather than Gur, we'll say, we'll say Cindy. So maybe Cindy's a big fan. Cindy. But then, of course, I would wipe out all these little squares. You don't need that. Uh, well, you know, I take it back. I take it back. You might need this information because I bet you if Cindy was very excited about her name and I put two exclamation points, yeah, little problem there, huh? You have to go recreate those. So anyway, you can't, this particular font, you can't do those exclamation points, which, you know, most of us probably aren't going to want that, but anyway. Or maybe there's another Jurassic font out there that has one. Let's see. Okay, so with that, do, 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 do. Okay, another thing, a uh, slicer, if you're going to slice this. And let me open up my slicer. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now, when you get this ready, there's a couple of settings I think that'll help this work really well. And this is an i3 Mark III, which is as big as I can, it's about as big as I can get, as you can see. Uh, there's a couple of things. One, when you're doing something so big and so wide and you want it to be so flat, it's probably a good idea to slow down that first layer. So what I did, because, ah, uh, I got it right behind me. I did one earlier from one of these Christmas ones and I had a lot of, a lot of issues. Uh, and part of that was because I wasn't going slow enough. Now one thing, if you're, if you're not doing this, I do this all the time, when I'm putting anything down, I use a glue stick. I put a glue stick wherever I'm gonna lay it down, wherever the, it's gonna put the PLA, and it works pretty well for me. So I tend to do a nice little bit of glue stick on the corners, and that helps, and also slowing it down helps a lot. So you can go to print settings here, and you can go to speed. You go down to first layer here, and you can set the exact millimeters and everything. You can say only go 10 millimeters per second. I don't think like that. Or, you, but you can just say 40%. So now it's going to run 40. Per, everything it could do is going to run 40% of its normal speed on that first layer, and that seemed to help. Uh, now another thing I did is for infills, I keep doing this. I keep enabling ironing, ironing for the topmost surface just to help with the lettering, which means that the, uh, the the majority of the mat is not going to be ironed. It's just the letter the 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 black indentation and the, letter, and the lettering will be, and that seems to, I shouldn't say it seems to, I think it's helping, I need to do some more tests. Okay, so there we go. Now, another thing you need to do, and I'll undo this, is if you print it out like this, you just get one big old color, it's not gonna work. So you need to put in a change point, a filament change point, and one thing that helps is you can go down here and start dragging this up, and what will happen is, in between these two arrows, it's gonna show, it's gonna, those are the only layers you're gonna see. So I keep going up, keep going up until the last two layers, and now I can see those are the, the risen ones. I hit this plus button, and then I do like to see the color, so I can right click on this, edit the color, make it black, which does not actually make it black, it just makes it more visually appealing here when you're in the Prusa Slicer. And there you go. Um, and if you want to be a little crazy, I could also go change the color of the bottom, where you can't do that here on the bottom because it's not a change point, but I can go to the filament and change the color to something more bone-like. I probably won't get it very close, but there you go. Mm. Uh, and then slice it and run it, and you're good to go. So with that, uh, let's go over the numbers. So uh, it, this, took, this print took two hours and 36 minutes to print. It took 2.3 cents worth of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.036 kilograms, and at $20 per kilogram, that comes up to 72 cents of the material. So all in, to get this guy done, was a whopping 75 cents. And I think, I got some more matte stuff I'm working on right now, like the Christmas one you probably saw that's kind of torn apart. There's, I think there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this, and I plan on doing a few more. So, because um, I'm trying to, I'm also, with the homeschool conference coming up, I'm trying to appeal to some of these crafters. Um, and I think, the 3D print can be a good tool for that. And so it can probably draw them in and get them involved. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so with all that, let's just wrap this up. Uh, 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this, you can teach others, and you can make amazing design. So design it, engineer it. I just finished printing out a Flexi Pliers print in place toy by Cisco. It's pretty cool and I'm loving it. I think it's going to be a hit at the homeschool conference. 
And you can go find it on printables right now. If you have a minute, go check it out. I put an image of it at the end of this video here, so you can see it. It's really cool, it pinches and grabs, and it's got this little flex thing. It's just awesome. Go check it out.